thank you so much for joining me for Big Ideas, Little Minds. This is a special story time where we talk about big topics in a kid-friendly way. My name is Caitlin and I work at EVPL Oakland. Before we get started, I'd like to read a little poem that comes from the book, I Am Enough by Grace Byers. I'm not meant to be like you. You're not meant to be like me. Sometimes we will get along and sometimes we will disagree. I know that we don't look the same. Our skin, our eyes, our hair, our frame. But that does not dictate our worth. We both have places here on earth. And in the end, we are right here to live a life of love, not fear to help each other when it's tough, to say together, I am enough. Great job. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our story time. So today we are talking about environmentalism, which is just a big fancy word to describe taking care of your environment, whether it's your local community, the forests, the lakes, the beaches, the oceans, anything like that. So for our book today, we're going to read Rocket Says Clean Up by Nathan Bryan. And so before we even get started with the book, a fun thing that you can do at home with your grown up is to just look at the cover art and try make predictions about what you think this book will be about. Hmm. So we see a surfboard. I'm guessing that's Rocket right there. We see some sea creatures. We see a garbage bag. So I think this book is gonna talk about litter, which is just trash that's thrown around outside. So as we open the book, we'll see here we have a little summary that'll tell us what this book is about. And here we have the title page, which has the title again, Rocket Says Clean Up, with the author and the illustrator. So the illustrator is who drew the pictures. I can't sleep tonight. I'm too excited because tomorrow, me, my mom, and my big brother Jamal are going on vacation to see my Grammy and Grampy. It feels as though we've been packing forever, but now we're ready to go. Do you like to go visit your grandma and grandpa too? Maybe you have other relatives that you like to visit, maybe an aunt or an uncle or some cousins, maybe some family friends. I'm gonna be fist bumping a turtle, dancing with a dolphin, high-fiving an octopus, and surfing the waves like Awesome Imani Wilmot. Did you know Imani Wilmot created the first female surf competition in Jamaica? I didn't know that. So it looks like Rocket loves to surf. And Rocket's gonna visit the beach and see all kinds of fun sea creatures. As soon as we arrive, I give my Grammy and Grampy a huge hug. And look, they've made it. There's the beach in the background. And this little sign here says Animal Sanctuary. So it's a safe place for animals to live. My grandparents are the best. They run whale watching tours and have an animal sanctuary behind their house. I can't wait to help. Grampy tells me we never touch wild animals unless they need to be rescued or cared for. Did you know that? That's one way that you can help the environment by leaving the wild animals in the wild. But first, it's time to surf. My Grammy is really good. Then mom and I build a huge sand castle. Oh no, a baby turtle has washed up on shore, all tangled in plastic. Oh no. I pick her up gently and take her to Grammy and Grampy. They can fix this. 
Grammy says she will try her best and takes her back to the sanctuary. Plastic is ruining these islands, Rocket, says Grampy sadly. We save as many creatures as we can, but some stay away. People used to come here to see the whales, but we haven't spotted a whale in a long time. How do you think Rocket feels about that? Look at their facial expression. Probably a little sad, I would imagine. He leads me down the beach. It feels as though there is more plastic than there is sand. I feel really sad. We need to do something. But what? And look, what do we see here on the beach? Yeah, a whole lot of garbage, it looks like. The next day at the beach, there are people playing in the sand, swimming in the sea, and eating popsicles, but all I notice now is the plastic. Surely they see it too. I need to let everyone know. How do you think Rocket's gonna get everyone to help? Hmm, let's find out. Did you know whales eat the plastic and it makes them sick? Did you know nearly half the trash in the sea comes directly from careless people? Did you know there are over 5.25 trillion pieces of plastic in the ocean? I don't even know how much that is. That's just so much. So Rocket's going around telling everyone on the beach some facts about the ocean and the litter. And then Rocket says, soon we have lots of new friends who want to help. Wonderful. As the day goes on, more and more people join. We spend the whole day cleaning the beach. Even Jamal helps. The cleanup crew is amazing. Wow, look at that. And soon the beach is clean. How does everyone feel about that? Pretty proud, I would say, happy, proud. They worked hard and they made the place better. But now what do we do with all this plastic that we collected? Teresa, part of the cleanup crew, has a brilliant idea. My mom is an artist. Maybe we could get her to create something out of it. And then they say, yes. So we'll see uh, what her mom makes out of it. Let's see. Teresa's mom makes awesome bins for trash out of the trash we collected. And the cleanup crew makes the front page of the newspaper and the TV news. No one will forget why we need to clean up. And why do we need to clean up? Rocket says everyone on the island wants clean beaches. Everyone on the island wants clean water. And everyone on the island wants to bring back the whales. The next day, Grammy and Grampy have a barbecue for the whole cleanup crew. The smell of Grammy's special sauce wafts around the island. And best of all, while everyone's talking and laughing and eating, Grampy and I release the turtle we rescued back into the sea and watch as she swims away. She's all better now. And look, there she goes. She got healthy again and the animal sanctuary helped her. And I just know one day the whales will come back. Did you know one day you're going to change the world rocket? And look, it's really teeny tiny, but there's a whale right back there in the background and they're coming back. Great job. So we don't really have beaches here in Indiana, except along the lakes in the northern part of the state and maybe around some of the lakes here too. Very small beaches, but not like the ocean. But there's still things that we can do to help our communities, even if we don't live on the beach or visit the beach like Rocket. So one thing we can do is when we're going to the park, we can take a trash bag with us and pick up any litter that we may see on the ground. 
Just make sure you have your adult with you, wear gloves, and don't pick up anything sharp or dangerous looking. Another thing that we could do, and Rocket talks about this a little bit, is the plastic. We could reduce our use of single-use plastics like water bottles and use reusable water bottles instead. And that'll help reduce the amount of plastic that goes out into landfills in the ocean. So there's all kinds of things that you can do. And you can talk with your grown-up too about what kinds of things you would like to do to help the environment or just to help your local community. All right, we've got a couple of rhymes and songs before we'll end our story time for today. So our first one is called Once There Was a Litter Bug. Once there was a litter bug, here he is, who went from town to town, throwing out his garbage, throw it out, that landed on the ground. The garbage grew so high, oh no, that when he turned around, the litter bug got buried, oh no, and he was never found. Good job, let's say that one again. Once there was a litter bug, get out your bugs, who went from town to town, throwing out his garbage, throw it out, that landed on the ground. The garbage grew so high, uh-oh, here it comes, that when he turned around, the litter bug got buried, bury him and he was never found. Good job, let's do that one one more time. What do we start with? Our litter bug. Once there was a litter bug who went from town to town, throwing out his garbage that landed on the ground. The garbage grew so high that when he turned around, the litter bug got buried, oh no! And he was never found. Good job. Now we'll sing another song about a bug, but this one is called the Itsy Bitsy Spider. So most people, when they do this, they do these hand motions, something like this, which is perfectly fine. But if you find it hard to do that with your fingers, if your dexterity is just not there, you could also do this. That's another way that you can do that rhyme. And this just makes it a little easier for some of our littles. All right, are we ready? The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Good job, let's do that one one more time. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Good job. So if you wanna explore more about environmentalism, look at some more books about that, check out the attached book list to this story time. It's got a bunch of great books on there that you can check out and ebooks as well if you're interested in that to continue the conversation at home. So for these story times, we like to end with three affirmations. And affirmations are just a way that we can remind ourselves that we're worthy, that we're valid, and it helps give us a little self-confidence. So my three affirmations for today are I am helpful, I am kind, and I care for myself and the earth. So go ahead and feel free to repeat them. I am helpful, I am kind, and I care for myself and the earth. And let's say it just one more time. I am helpful, I am kind, and I care for myself and the earth. Great job. If you want to check out our other story times, feel free to get on our Facebook page or visit us on YouTube at EVP Library. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you.